love lives here. So let's go ahead and we're going to say our focus statement this morning, but <clears throat> today we're talking about mindful intentions. And so I want you to be mindful and I want you to be intentional as we speak our focus statement into existence. So here we go. We embolden people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love. Feel the mindfulness of that statement. Feel the intention of that statement. We embolden people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love. Here at Centers for Spiritual Living Worldwide, we are working with the theme this year, 2020 Spiritual Vision, which means a 2020 clear seeing, uh, 2020 discernment, if you will, 2020 clarity, if you will. Right. So this is the theme for the year 2020 spiritual vision. And the theme for the month is mindfulness for mavericks. And last week we talked about mindfulness and we talked about mavericks. And we're going to uh, revisit that just a brief moment, uh, just briefly today. And then I shared with you last week that this week we will be speaking about the idea of mindful intentions. So. <clears throat> When we look at the word maverick, the way we defined maverick last week is we defined it as somebody who is present with what is, somebody who is present with what is, somebody who gets proximate to whatever it is that's going on in life, and somebody who has a clear vision, a clear idea of um, a world that they would like to live in, that has a clear idea of things that they would like to see change, that has a clear vision, if you will, that is pulling them forward. And they are somebody who is willing to challenge the status quo. They are somebody with strong convictions who's willing to speak up and speak out and also take action. And that's what we're going to be working with in the next couple of weeks. We'll be talking about mindful speech and mindful actions. But today we are working with mindful intentions. A maverick is also somebody who is passionate and authentic and comes from a place of great intentionality. And they are intentional in their thought, word, and deed. So remember also, too, when we talked about mindfulness, that being mindful is, being, is having our minds... Our minds don't just live here, they live here, they live here, right? That having our minds fully in the presence and fully in the present, but having our minds fully in the presence, fully in the awareness of our conscious union with the divine, fully in awareness, fully in the presence of the divine itself, to be completely and totally and fully aligned with the presence in the present moment, because there is only one moment that is ever happening, and that is the eternal now moment. Everything occurs, all thought, all word, all feelings, all actions occur in the present moment. They don't occur in the past, they don't occur in the future, they occur here and now, always in the moment, always in the eternal moment, always in the eternal now. Right. So if we're being mindful mavericks, we are those who perhaps have an independent way of thinking or an innovative way of thinking, an innovative way of looking at the world, a unique perspective on the world. And I know that some of you out there may be thinking, oh, well, I don't have a unique perspective. I'm not innovative. You're uniquely you. You are an individualized expression of the one life, the only life that is. You are completely individualized. Therefore, you do have unique ideas. You do have unique gifts and talents that you're bringing to the world. You are unique in your oneness, right? You are individualized. You're an individualized expression of the one life. So therefore, what I know is that each of you, each of us is a maverick. So 
We might not always accept that term. We might not always embrace that term, but that is who you are. A maverick is an individualized expression of the one life, the one power, the one presence. So embrace that, own it, breathe that in, feel it, right? So if a, if a maverick then is passionate and authentic and living intentionally, what we teach here at Centers for Spiritual Living is that what we focus our intention and our attention on expands. Is that correct? Right? That's what we teach, right? Yes? Yeah? Okay. So <clears throat> that what we focus our intention on expands. So what have you been focusing your intention on lately? What have you been focusing your attention on lately? Have you noticed that it expands? We've had this conversation before. If you intend to see yellow cars, what are you gonna see? You're gonna see yellow cars, right? Because you're bringing your awareness to something. You are bringing your consciousness to and as an avenue of awareness, your consciousness, your mind, your heart, your spirit is an avenue of awareness. So you're bringing that to the table. You're bringing that to the forefront. And so then what are we are aware of, what we are focusing our intention on, what we are focusing our attention on expands. So my question to you this day, actually, there's a series of questions for you this day, but my question for you this day is, I want you to imagine, what if we focused our intention, what would it look like for our own personal lives and for the lives of our spiritual community and the life of our city, the life of our county, the life of our state, nation, world, planet, universe, what would it look like? What would we experience if we were more mindful in focusing our intentions on being compassionate, on being loving? What if we focus our intention on educating ourselves what if we focused our intention on facing challenges head on, not turning away, not looking away, not trying to pretend that they don't exist? What if we met the challenges of the day intentionally and mindfully? What if we focused our intention on educating ourselves to learn more about our history, not just what we've been taught, not just what we've been indoctrinated to believe? not what we've just been enculturated to believe. What if we used our intention to actively dive and look and see and get proximate with what is? What if we use our intention to dismantle racism? What if we use our intention to deconstruct the systems that have been in place for far too long? What if we use our intention to forgive, what if we use our intention, what if we focus our intention on atoning for our mistakes, atoning for our wrongdoings? Yes, atoning for, oh, heaven forbid the word, sins. Because we know that a sin is nothing more than missing a mark. It is an error, it is a mistake. So what if we use our intention, what if we focus our intention on forgiveness and atonement, and then making amends, making reparations for those mistakes, for making reparations for those transgressions? What if we focused our intention there? What might our universe look like? What might our world look like? What might our lives look like if we focused our intention on inclusion and unity, like real inclusion, real unity? What would our lives look like if we focused our intention on living our highest potential. Really, living our highest potential. 
not just mouthing words, not just saying those words every Sunday, we embolden people to live their highest potential. But if we really set the intention to actually live our highest potential, and what if we set our intention to actually take 100% responsibility for our lives? 100% responsibility for how we show up in the world. 100% responsibility for our thoughts, our words, and our actions. What might our lives look like if we actually focused our intention there? What would our lives look like if we intentionally, mindfully, and focused our intention on creating a world that works for everyone and all of creation? What if we focused our intention on creating a new heaven and a new earth right here and now? What if we focused our intention on surrendering, surrendering all that has come before, surrendering our small selves and opening up to be a transparency for the divine? What if we focused our intention there? What if we focused our intention on conscious union with God, conscious union with the divine? What if we focused our intention on bringing ourselves into alignment and then living from that place? That place of oneness, that place of wholeness, that place of inclusion. What if we focused, mindfully focused our intention on being an avenue for God, being an avenue of awareness to being a transparency for the divine, living, moving, breathing, and having our being in it and it as us? What if we have focused our intention there? What might your life look like right now if you focus your intention in any one of these areas? What might it look like? What might it look like for your family? What might it look like for your neighbors, your neighborhood? What might it look like for Riverside Center for Spiritual Living? What might it look like for the city of Riverside, the county of Riverside? What might it look like? What might it look like? What might it look like if you opened intentionally opened to a higher vision, to a higher way of knowing? What might it look like if we really, truly opened to our highest and greatest potential? What might it look like if we focused our intention mindfully on creating the beloved community? What might it look like to focus our intention mindfully in the presence as the presence? And I want you to know that even with intention, intention does not always equal impact right? Intention does not always equal impact. Sometimes we can have the best of intentions. We can say, we can think that, oh yes, well, I intended to do good or I intended no harm or I intend for things to be all beautiful and wonderful. And that is my intention, but that's not always the impact that our intentions have. Sometimes our what we may have intended does not have the same kind of impact, the same kind of lived experience. It doesn't always land the same way. The, the impact of whatever it is that we say or whatever it is that we do does not always land with the same intention. People don't experience it in, with the intention with which we think we were bringing forward to it. And when this happens, it's usually because of our ignorance, our ignorance. Ignorance is the same root word for ignore. So <clears throat> it is our ignorance. So what is it that we are ignorant of? What is it that we are ignoring? Whether we are ignoring it consciously or whether we are 
ignoring it unconsciously, that it is our ignorance, it is our ignoring something, and it is being unaware of something that has caused there to be some kind of miscommunication or misunderstanding that there has been, that there has caused an impact that is different from what we had intended. And that is based in our ignorance. And so we will frequently, when we make a mistake, because we're going to make mistakes, we're going to stumble as we do this work together, we are going to bump around and rub off our sharp edges on one another. So what is it? So when we do that, we have the opportunity then to receive feedback. So when our intention and the impact are not equal, do not jive, do not mesh, do not come together, and somebody offers us feedback, what we have the opportunity to do as a maverick, as somebody living an intentional life, what we have the opportunity to do is to be self-reflective, to learn and to grow, to learn to listen and understand, listen for understanding and make adjustments there. We have the opportunity to receive the feedback with grace, the opportunity to receive the feedback with gratitude, the opportunity to not try to defend and not try and say, well, that wasn't my intention. I'm so sorry I, your feelings got hurt. That wasn't my intention. Because once again, that's centering it back on ourselves. And it's not about that. It's about being in communion and in connection with another. So when somebody is so vulnerable to share feedback with you, when you have expressed your ignorance, knowingly or unknowingly, and you receive the feedback, we have the opportunity to be gracious and grateful and honor the person who is so vulnerable, who is caring enough about your relationship together to offer you feedback. We have the opportunity to receive that graciously, mindfully, self-reflectively. We have the opportunity to receive that gift and use that gift for a greater awareness, a greater understanding, an opportunity to shift our thinking, an opportunity to shift our intention, an opportunity to really look at our motivations and see whether they are clear or not and to shift, to expand in consciousness, to expand in our awareness. This is a great gift in this because sometimes when our intentions don't match our impact and we receive that feedback, that is yet another opportunity for growth, but we must do it with grace. We must do it with grace and with gratitude. Because when we remember who we are, that we are the divine made manifest, that we are the individualized expression of the one life, when we bring ourselves back to that, then we also remember who the beloved is in front of us that is offering us this feedback. It is an opportunity to be in right relationship. It is an opportunity to be in holy communion with one another. And when we receive the feedback, and we take it in and we grow, then we have the opportunity to follow up, not just with intentions, but to follow up with words and to follow up with actions, demonstrating our understanding, demonstrating that we have heard and we have understood and that we have made a course correction. This is an opportunity for us. And it takes all of us. It's not just me, it's not just you, it's all of us. So when we think about this as a whole, we have the opportunity and we do do our individual work, 
not just for ourselves, but for all of life, for all of the planet, for all of consciously, uh, all of consciousness. We live mindfully. We choose to live mindfully. We choose to live intentionally. We choose to live from a place of an avenue of awareness, of a transparency for God. We don't just do this for ourselves. We do this for all. And sometimes what we realize is that when we're doing it for others, who we're actually doing it for is ourselves. There is a great learning here that happens when we are in communion, when we are in connection with one another, when we are in conscious union with one another, when we bring to ourselves together mindfully and intentionally, when we interact mindfully and intentionally, there is great power. There is great presence. There is great love. And so a world that works for all, a world that works for everyone in all of creation is our collective responsibility. It is a vision that we as mavericks, we as mavericks of centers for spiritual living hold high, that we aspire to, that we strive to, that we set our intentions, we set our sights to moving forward to creating the beloved community. And so I invite you this day to breathe in. I invite you this day to surrender and allow the spirit within to speak, the spirit within to guide, the spirit within to direct, I invite you to be mindful of your intentions. I invite you to bring your mind fully into the presence and being from that place of fully in the presence to set your intentions this day. And know that there is no intention too great or too small. We start where we are, and that is how we begin to create a world that works for all, how we begin to move into and live in the beloved community. And so it is. Blessed be. And so I invite us to come together in consciousness here and now. So I invite you, if you will, to go ahead and just close your eyes. Simply allow your eyes to... Close and feel your breath, recognizing that it is this is the breath of life that is breathing you, that is moving through and as you, that is maintaining and sustaining its beloved creation, its individualization, it's you, the beloved in whom it is well pleased. I recognize here and now that there is only one power and one presence there is no power or presence opposed to this one life. There is no power opposed to God. There is no power opposed to love. There is no power that maintains and sustains any discord, any disharmony, because there could be no other power. If there were another power, there would be two and there would be self-destruction. And what I know is because we are living, moving, breathing, we are having our being here and now. I recognize that there is just this one life. This one love expressing itself always and in all ways. It is the very who of who I am. It is the very who of who each one is. And it is this love, it is this life that I call into my awareness now, that I bring into my conscious awareness, that I bring into conscious union, that I bring into holy communion here and now. I focus my intention and I focus my attention on the being, the presence of love. I focus my intention on the isness that is the allness that is the fullness of life. I focus my intention here and now, recognizing and knowing that as I do so, anything unlike it simply falls away back into the nothingness from which it came. I focus my intention here and now on the presence, on the love that is present. And I recognize that 
as I do so, a new heaven and a new earth is being created right here and right now through my consciousness, by right of consciousness. That this power, this presence, this love is the very grounding, the very foundation of my being, my wholeness, that I am an avenue, an individualized expression for it. And so I open out a way, I surrender to it and allow it to use me. I say, spirit, use me, command my hands what they must do, command my life, it's here for you. And I allow myself to be used, to use for spirit to use my voice, for spirit to use my hands, for spirit to use my intention to be more fully expressed here and now and in my beloved community, in Riverside Center for Spiritual Living, in our city, in our area. I recognize and I set my intention in conscious union with the divine. And I know and I experience a change. I experience an uplifting, I experience a rising in consciousness for the entire planet, but especially for our country this day. I set my intention on remembering the beloveds who have gone before our premature ancestors. I set my intention on being available, making myself available as spirit sees fit to use me to make the change, to bring about a new heaven, a new earth, to bring about the beloved community. I set my intention to be willing to be available. I set my intention to say yes to whatever is put before me, knowing that it is the spirit within that does the work, that I of my own self do nothing. It is the spirit within. And I give thanks. I give thanks for the intention set here this day. I give thanks for the action and activity of the law. I give thanks for my awareness of my oneness with the divine. I give thanks for my life. I give thanks for my breath. I give thanks for the sacred yes. And I release this word, knowing that it is already done, knowing that it is already complete, that a new heaven and a new earth is happening here right now. Knowing that freedom is happening right now, that knowing that we are liberated right now from the tyranny of oppression, racism, hate. There is no place for it. And so I know that love is the only governance and the only government. And knowing this, I simply say, and so it is. Love